Hello everyone and welcome to this ScantCat Pro video which is going to be all about sketching and some of the different tools and techniques we can employ to make our sketches in a variety of different ways. So I have this part imported here and I'm going to begin the process by starting my first sketch to create this base layer here. So let's grab a sketch. I'm going to use the mesh sketch option and select this XY plane and bring it up slightly using the gizmo so that I can get this nice outline of the mesh profile. So the huge advantage of using the mesh sketch is the fact that we can leverage these outlines of the mesh to best fit the appropriate entities automatically. So I'm going to go in, grab my circle, hold control to activate the fitting option and click on that. And that generates this nice best fit circle for that outer ring. I can also do the same for these two guys here, let's say. And if I prefer to use a more manual option, I could choose one of these two modes. So let's start off with the first one. You'll notice that if I also hover my mouse over any important points like the origin or the center point of this one, I can use it to guide my mouse and get an exact point that's going to be in line with the position of the left side circle. So I'm going to click there to set my center point, drag out until it meets the outer ring. Then I'm going to go in with this mode here to create three points using three selections on the last one. Okay, so now we've got the sketch entities made. Let's give it some definitions of size and position. So easy way to do that is with the smart dimension here. So I'm going to activate that, click on the outer ring, click on there to place it, and then type in 43.5 to make it precise. I'm going to also then apply it for this one. So let's round that up to 3.75 millimeters. And then to make sure that all of these are going to be the same size, I'm just going to grab all of these together using my control click and set up an equal constraint. So now, no matter what the size of this is, so if I change it to five, it changes it for all of them together, which is nice. The other thing I can also set is the position of these holes relative back to, let's say, the center point. So I'm gonna click on that origin. You'll notice that I can go with a direct two point distance, vertical or horizontal. So I'm just gonna place that, let's say I need that to be exactly 13, and that looks good there. Okay, so I'm gonna click accept sketch, that's my sketch that's going to be shown right there. I'm just going to hide the mesh so you can see that. There it is. So then I'm going to go in with my extrude, select on that sketch profile, and just use my control click to set the thickness of the extrusion. So let's round that up to two. Perfect. Okay, so let's begin the second step, which is going to be this sketch here. So I'll go back into my sketch mode and set up another mesh sketch using this XZ plane. And for this one, I'm only going to be modeling half of it because I know that I can just revolve that around the center axis and that's going to give me the whole body there. So let's go in with our line. I'm going to hold control to use the fitting mode, fit these lines directly on there. Okay, so you'll notice that for this one, it automatically joined these two lines because they were already close enough that the software just automatically brought them together, but this one hasn't been connected. So a quick way to bring any two line segments together is just using a corner trim. So I can select that, select these two lines like so, and that joins them up nicely. Like, Okay, so the other thing I'm gonna do is just extend using this extend tool to bring the ends of these lines slightly inward or outward, I should say. And I'm going to also then set up a vertical line here to act as my center axis. You notice that this line becomes black because it has a fully defined set of constraints, meaning it can't be moved. So I can't change the position of it, but I can just stretch it out. But for these ones, these stay blue because they haven't yet been fully defined here. So I'm going to then go ahead and apply a quick couple of angles to define these two. So let's round that up to 30. And I'm going to take this one, round that to 45. Okay, let's reposition this slightly here. I also want to make sure that this is vertical. So I'm just going to click on it, add a vertical constraint. You can see that there. And while that's going, I'm then going to finish it off by closing off the sketch. So anytime you make a sketch profile, it needs to be fully closed. So I'm just going to come in with my line and just manually draw these two. And you'll notice that these horizontal and vertical lines appear so that I can keep this perfectly in line and horizontal to create this shape. So you'll also notice these two horizontal 
constraints being added there. Okay, so I just need to trim off these extra pieces. So that's where I'm going to go in with my trim primitives option, hold control and just mouse over the extra bits I don't need. There we go. I'm going to accept that sketch. And now let's come in here, go to revolve. And I'm going to select the center axis. Let me just hide the mesh for a second. Center axis, that's going to be my revolved item. And there's the preview. Hit OK. And there we go. OK. So now the last step is just this upper portion here. So to do that, I'm going to create a sketch from the top. So go in for my model, hold control, click on the upper surface to fit a, a sketch plane there. Bring it down slightly so that I can get this outer profile. Okay. So for this one, I'm going to go in with my circle. I'm going to use the three points to just fit it to these three points. And that should give me a pretty good estimate of what that is. Let's type that in as 31 millimeters there. And I'm just going to then go in with my arc, use the fitting option to fit these arcs here. And then I'm just going to go and add some lines as well. So these are all just manually made. I could just go in and use a fitting option as well, but sometimes it's a little easier to control the angle with the manual option like so. Okay. And all the extra pieces, remember that's something I'm going to need to trim off. And also I need to make sure that it's a completely closed profile. So that's what I'm going to take care of next. So let's go and join these up. So I'm going to use corner trim here to just join these two, join these two and repeat for the other segments here. Oops. I just did a control Z there to undo that last one. Okay. So almost done. And let's trim out the extra bits using trim primitives. So we don't need that. We don't need that. We don't need this. We don't need these three. Repeat over here. And finally here. Okay. So now that we have this outline, I could go in and define these more, but for the sake of time, I'll just accept that. And let's go in with our extrusion, select that surface and just bring it right down to here. Okay, let's make that a minus two millimeters. Perfect. Okay. So now we've got this part that I've modeled up. And you can see that this has all just been fully created using the sketch entities. So I'm just noticing here that I could probably shave off a little bit of that. So anytime I could go in with my sketch, go to edit, and that brings you right back here. Let's make this a little shorter. And there we go. So um, that is the different ways that we can use our sketch tools to create our design and complete the CAD model of the part.